So let's talk about some body handling while Kitty is finishing up some wet food out of the syringe here. While he's eating, I'm gonna go in and touch his front paw. A little bit of a growl at me there, so I'm gonna pause. Wait for him to tell me he wants to continue. And we just put some flea meds on him, so he's not in the greatest of moods right now, but we did it voluntarily. So, nope, okay. So if he moves away when I go to touch, that means he's not interested. Good boy. A little bit of a growl there. I'm gonna finish it off. Good boy. And a little growl. So even though he's telling me, hey, this is a boundary, he's still saying, but it's not enough of a boundary that I'm unwilling to walk away. And that's what's really important there is if it's not something he loves, he's able to tell me it's not something he loves, but as long as he's willing to stay here and keep working, it means we can still potentially keep offering those experiences to him. I'm gonna pull up a bit more of that wet food. Let's see what he will allow. Hi, kitty. What's more? Hey, bud. Okay. And again, he's able to express those boundaries whenever he stops or takes a break. We're going to give him one. We're going to wait for him to choose to continue eating. When he's still happily eating, we're going to attempt to go ahead and touch again. And when he stops, so do we. So he has complete control over this situation. If he wants to eat, he's going to have to allow some touching. And when he wants a break, we both take one. Now again, he just got some flea meds, so he's much less tolerant of paw touching right now. And he's not typically very tolerant of paw, touch, paw touching in general, but we don't get growls as frequently as we do right now. I'm gonna reach towards it. No growls, that's a good choice. Good boy, kitty. So not going quite as far that time, reaching out again. Good boy, single touch and move away. No growls that time. He took a break. But we didn't get a growl. We're gonna wait. So he's eating, moving towards, touch. Good, that time he did not stop. We're gonna wait again. Goes in to eat some treats. Oh, no. So he's eating, reaching towards, touch. Took a break, but no growl. That was very good. Can you get those crumbs? For that. Wet food on my carpet? Yeah, cool. There he goes, he's eating again. We reach in, we touch. Good boy. And we did a couple touches there and he growled, but he very quickly went right back to eating. So he growled, but didn't stop eating that time. So we're seeing he's getting a little bit more tolerant, still expressing boundaries, but not enough good where he was uh, stopping, at least in the Previous example. Good. Good. Now, if I hadn't just put flea meds on him, I could also try touching his ears or, um, you know, flipping his ears back and looking at them. We did just put flea meds on him, so I don't want to go ahead and touch around his head or neck right now. I wouldn't have to go for his paws. I could also try lifting up his tail or touching around his sides and his um, tummy. But because of the position he's in and because we did just do those flea meds, I'm not going to push him too far today. But this is an example of how you might do some body handling um, with regards to paw touches or other body touches while also getting them used to some of the tools that you might see at your vet's office. Thanks.